So I think we're all familiar with the X100V at this point. Ever since I first used it, I've been trying to think up ways to justify purchasing it. Recently, I had the idea that it might be an interesting supplement to my wedding photography kit, but I had to answer one question. Can the X100V shoot legitimate portraits? Hi everybody, for those of you who are new here, my name is Zach. I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And yes, there is a lot to love about the Fujifilm X100V, except for maybe the price, but for the $1,400 US, you are getting quite a bit for your money. The X100 series is known for travel and street photography, and it's the personal camera of choice for many people. So again, the question is portraiture. Can this camera legitimately capture people and can it do it in a way that justifies me owning yet another camera? In order to answer that question, I rented the X100V for a few days and scheduled a couple of shoots with my friends. Let's talk about it. For the purposes of this video, I've identified a few things which I think are important to consider when you are choosing a camera for portraiture. The first thing on the list is the lens. And in the case of the X100V, it's an all-in-one package. It's a fixed 23 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera or a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length lens with a maximum aperture of f2. Now, Fujifilm also sells adapters with which will change the usable focal length of this lens, but I haven't used those and I'm not really considering them in this video. If I really wanted to change lenses, I probably wouldn't be buying a camera that doesn't have an interchangeable lens mount. It's certainly a nice option to have the adapters, but for me, one of the big selling points of the X100 series is the point and shoot nature of it. This lens is really sharp throughout its entire focusing range, which is something that's important, especially considering that I like to capture a variety of images when I'm shooting with a subject, wide, medium, and tight. The lens is able to create a nice separation between the subject and the background, and while it still captures the environment quite nicely, being a relatively wider lens, it still gives a good amount of distinction between subject and background. You still get a little bit of compression, you get some beautiful fall off uh, in focus, and it just creates a really gorgeous look. By the way, I've posted a set of images from the shoot on my Behance profile, so if you're not already following me there, go check it out. Um, you can get some info about the photos and see some more of them in detail. I'll link that down below. I think you'll find that this is a really beautiful lens for portraiture. It has a beautiful lens flare and it renders really nicely. Of course, your feelings about this lens may vary depending on personal preference, according to how you like to shoot and whether or not you like shooting portraits on a wider lens, like a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length. So that might be something that you have to decide for yourself based on your style of shooting. The next thing I think about when shooting portraits is character and creativity. A big selling point of this camera for me is how it encourages creativity. I enjoy using Fujifilm cameras specifically because of the built-in film simulation profiles, as well as the ability to customize really interesting film recipes and also shoot directly to beautiful JPEG files. When shooting portraits, these Fujifilm JPEG recipes can create really interesting and beautiful skin tones. I love the idea of not having to edit the files in post, being able to shoot straight to JPEG. In fact, all of the images that you see here are straight out of camera JPEGs, right out of the X100V. But also having the option to shoot raw as a backup in case I do need to edit the files in post. There are also some built-in features to this camera that encourage creativity, like the built-in flash the ND filter, the flip out screen, the close focus distance. It's really quite special that all of these features are packed into this camera with such a small form factor. So now that we've established a few things that make this camera make sense for portraiture, let's talk about a few reasons why this might not be the most ideal camera for taking pictures of people. First is autofocus. While well, the autofocus on the X100V is certainly usable and I'm glad to have it, it's not the most reliable, especially the face autofocus. Now I'm coming to this from using the Canon EOS R6, which is a camera system that has 
really incredible autofocus, so it's hard not to compare it to that. The, the autofocus on the X100V is usable, it's just not as reliable as some other mirrorless cameras on the market. Also, while this is a camera that's quite customizable and offers impressive drive modes like high-speed continuous shooting, I do think it's a camera that encourages you to slow down and take your time with the process of photography. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is something to consider. Are you the type of photographer who likes to take in the process and be methodical in your approach? Or are you someone that prefers to work fast paced? In my experience, while I love Fujifilm cameras, I do find that they make you work a little bit harder to achieve a consistent result. The files that come out of this camera can be absolutely amazing, but at least for me, the results are not as consistent as those that are offered by some other full frame mirrorless cameras on the market. So we're not gonna get into full frame versus APS-C or a comparison video today, but if you're curious about that subject, let me know and I can make a video about it in the future. To wrap up, I think the X100V is an incredible little camera and it certainly is capable of taking professional portraits. And it does all this while encouraging creativity and slowing down the photographic process. However, it wouldn't be my recommendation for someone who is using a camera primarily for portraiture. For the price, you could probably opt for something that would make more sense as a dedicated system for portrait photography, something like the Canon EOS R or RP, for example. But if you're someone who's looking for a compact, do-everything camera that can also shoot portraits, I think the X100V might be the perfect option for you. It's a gorgeous little camera with loads of features and it's capable of making really incredible images. Now it's time for you to let me know what you think. Do you use the X100V? And if you do, how do you use it? What kinds of things do you like to shoot with it? And, and why do you like using it? I'd love to know, so let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Thank you, thank you as always for watching. I'll see you soon, bye. Love is free.